Hi guys, uh, thanks for coming. My name's James Manxlow, uh, CEO of MindTools.com. Um, I'd like to talk to you about Too Busy for Learning, Breaking the Busy Barrier. Um, and I think as um, this is one of the most important things for me about development of uh, uh, learning and development pieces, and I think busyness and understanding people's busyness uh, can often make a real difference between whether the learning pieces we deliver succeed or whether they fail. Um, I'd like to start by, with some uh, good and bad news, and as ever, starting with the bad news. Um, I'll wander over this side. And the information really is in a lot of the data we can see here, a lot of the statistics we can see here. Information from the Institute of Learning and Management, July 2014, just 13% of workers have a good, good work-life balance. 94% of people work above their contracted hours. And that tells us a lot about the experience that people have in the workplace. UK Health and Safety Executive, October 2015, 440,000 cases of workplace stress a year in the UK, 9.9 .9 million days lost through stress, and work overload is a major cause of it. Up at the top, on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, the, the American Psychological Association, 22% of people are under extreme stress. And that's saying a lot. 70% of people in general experience stress from their work. And our own research, January 2016, you can't get much fresher than that, 66% uh, of people um, are too busy to do any more learning at work. 62% often defer learning to focus on delivery issues. So there's a real issue for people in the workplace of stress, of work overload, of not having the time to do the learning that we so desperately want them to be doing. So that's the bad news. The good thing is there's a lot of good news too. Uh, again, our survey from January, 97% of managers and professionals know that they are responsible for their own personal learning and development. And that's great because that's a message which people have been working on for years and that's a message which really has got across. 97% know that the self-directed learning that they're doing really impacts their business performance. 83% prefer self-directed learning to prescribed learning. I think we can probably work that out for ourselves. It's much better, uh, much more enjoyable to be doing learning that we decide we need to be doing and following paths that we want to be following. A slightly mediocre number there, 46%, using self-directed learning during working hours at their desks. We'd all hope to see a bit more than 46%. But this, for me, is the magic number. 65% of people engage with learning and development in weekends and in the evenings. And that is very thought-provoking. We've got the lower number for, for engagement in the workplace. We've got the higher number at the weekends. Uh, and this graph just gives it a bit of, bit of a feel for that. Um, what we've done is we've broken the numbers down so that you can see prescribed learning, the learning people have to do, is shown as the grey bars, and self-directed learning uh, is the, the learning people want to do for themselves as the orange bars. And the question is, what percentage of your learning time takes place during working hours? And again, we can see this bar, a very large amount of the, the prescribed learning that people knew, know they need to do is happening during work hours. There's a bit that goes on outside it, but very much workplace-based. But the really exciting thing, I think, for L&D are the orange bars going across here, and you can see how very, very much of the, the self-directed learning that goes on goes on outside the workplace. Uh, we can see this further in terms of the number of hours people take to engage with this. Across the bottom, we have zero, up to one, up to two, up to four, up to eight, eight or more hours. Um, and again, what we can see, the gray bars are prescribed learning, the orange is self-directed learning, and the prescribed learning is somewhere between one, up to one, and up to two hours a month. That equates to something like one to two days a year of prescribed learning taking place within the workplace. But when we look at the self-directed learning, there's a mass of it going on, up to two, up to four, up to eight, 
eight or more hours going on each month. And if that works out on an annual basis, there's something like 12 to 15, maybe more, maybe a lot more um, of self-directed learning going on outside out or learning that people want to be doing. Now, you can be a cynic and you can say, well, OK, that's fine. That's just people developing themselves. That's going to have no impact on the workplace. But actually, that's not the case. So again, how much self-directed learning is focused on organizational goals? 0% uh, at one end, 100% at the other end, and you, you wouldn't expect it really to be on either, either mention. But 40% of self-directed learning focused on organizational goals, 60%, 80%. A lot of it's going on. And if we look within ourselves, these numbers begin to make a bit of sense because as professionals, we want to be getting ahead in our career. We know that the skills we learn the skills we learn really make an impact on how far we get ahead in our career and learning skills that are consistent with what the organization's goals are that's the way to go and many many managers many many professionals many many people in the workplace get that and that's fantastic news for l d so we have these two forces we have people who are stressed on one hand and have very little time we then, on the other hand, have a great passion for learning and a great willingness to engage with learning. And if we have these two things, there's an amazing opportunity for L&D. If L&D can help people to learn in a way that fits in with their busy lives, then that's an amazing opportunity for people to take advantage of. And this session is about how we can do this. So why is Mind Tools talking about this? Um, why listen to us? Essentially, this is what we've been doing for 20 years. MindTools comes from a blog background. We don't come from a traditional L&D background. Blogs live and die by engagement. Um, it's all about getting people coming through and then getting that repeat engagement, getting people coming back time and time again. The, uh, last year, more than, the two, sorry, more than 25 million people a year came through the MindTools blog or the MindTool site, and many thousands of people, many, many thousands of people are paying for our learning and development out of their own pocket. We also work with some really great companies who really get the idea of the approach we're using, who really get this idea of targeting people in the middle of their busy work days. So thank you to those people, those companies. So this session, what I'd like to look at First of all, understanding busy people. I think a lot of us are very, very busy, so, we'll, so this, I won't spend too long on that. Getting their attention again and again. Delivering learning that fits with their lives. Meeting corporate needs, and then five key takeaways um, Well, uh, at the end of the session. So, understanding busy people. And you'll have heard a lot of this before. Uh, you know about global supply chains, you know about all of the massive amount of uh, communication, social media, everything that we all have. Um, I'm 48 years old. I can remember what life was like back before the internet, which seems a very strange and different place. And what you'd find uh, was maybe you'd receive three letters, and that's a strange concept now, three letters a day, say. Um, you might get a couple of memos or a trade magazine coming through the, um, through the door or maybe miracle of miracles, a fax. And you then compare that with where we are today and the thousands of uh, um, pieces of information which come through our, our experience. And it's an amazing difference. But that all impacts on people's business. The global nature of business impacts on people's business. It's all changed. Um, but we also... All of us here, all of us in this building, all of us in this city have personal lives. Uh, and, you know, families, aging relatives, moving house, all of the things which go on, busy commutes, people getting ill, all of this is going on in the background of stuff, and it all contributes to busyness. Again, we know this. What's more subtle, though, is that people put a lot of pressure, a lot of the pressure that's on people comes from inside themselves. And there's a great quote here from the ILM, 60% uh, of people admitted that the pressure to work extra hours was in part self-inflicted. And again, we can probably empathize with this. As professionals, we are professionals because we get things done. 
And that means focusing very intensely on customers. That means focusing very intensely on what our organization needs. And that takes a lot of our time and a lot of our effort. And is there time left for learning and development? Very often, there isn't. And that's why we need to work with this. What does this mean? This is a really nice, this, this comes again from the, uh, the research we did in January. And this is, when do people do learning? And when you look at this, this blue bar across the middle is the learning that a lot of us think of uh, in terms of learning and development, which is during work hours at the desk, at our desks. But actually, that's just part of it. That's just really quite, I wouldn't say a small part, but it's not the vast part. The green bars here are on-demand learning. When I need it, and across here, when I'm alerted to information. So this is the learning people do when they've got a problem. They go away, they find out about it, they come back, they solve their solution. That's brilliant. This is the learning they do when they receive a newsletter or they get something through their social media that announces something they're interested in. This is something they chase down. And then we have the orange bars going through here, which is the learning people are doing in their own time. Up at the top, on the way to and from work, on their commute, during breaks, during their lunchtime, during weekends and evening. There's a huge amount of it going on. And as LND people, we should be in there. We should be helping people engage with that. So what does this mean? If we're going to do that, if we're going to get people engaging with this material, learning needs to be front of mind. It needs to be always around. People need to be, people need to be seeing it. It needs to fit the needs of these very busy people that we're serving. Um, and it also needs to meet the needs of the people who are paying for it, too. So front of mind, getting their attention again and again. And the key question is here is, can you compel people to learn? And sure, there's learning, compliance learning, um, all of the different types of health and safety, all of the different types of learning that companies need to be seen to be doing. And people can be compelled to do that. But what about all of the rest of the training that enriches people, that makes them better workers, that really helps them uh, improve their careers? And if you can't compel people to learn, then you're as much in the marketing business as you are in the L&D business. So what does this mean? We're putting ourselves in the minds of our hyper-busy learners. How many messages are these people getting through in their, their various channels of communication in a day? Um, vast numbers, and we are competing for the privilege of their attention through, through this message stream. These are not people we can compel to take our messages. These are people who are choosing to take our messages. We can't force them. We need to tempt them. We need to inspire them to take our training, to take our messages, to go through and to learn. And if they're at their desks, it's quite simple. Email's a main driver. LinkedIn's a main driver. Um, we, we just need to be where they are. If they're away from their direct desks, We've got this whole stream of social media, of apps, of um, notifications, of everything that people are engaging with, um, which we need to be taking into account. But also, there are the old-fashioned, traditional ways of marketing that we need to be thinking about. Um, things like posters, leaflets, things like tables in staff canteens, all of these ways of engaging people and making sure our learning uh, is in the front of their mind. So, how, so we have, we're out there, we're marketing, we're putting lots of prompts out, in the, in, out into the workspace. How do we then deliver learning that fits with busy people? Now, again, we've heard a lot of this. You'll have heard a lot of this generally throughout the session. On demand, accessible whenever, wherever, however, on whatever device. Uh, easy access without logins. Small chunks that fit in with small chunks of time. So someone's waiting to pick up their kids at school. They have a 10-piece or a five-minute piece of e-learning uh, that they can get in and they can engage with. Different media formats for different situations. Again, this is all common sense stuff. Um, but it's important, and I'll get into formats on the next slide. But the really important things here, 
we've looked at the pattern of people's self-directed learning um, outside the workplace. You're not going to get people to engage with them if they're in, not enjoying this. Material has to be good, it has to be clear, it has to be well written, it has to be enjoyable, it has to leave people with a bit of a buzz at the end of the learning session. I think also there's a bit of a tendency in writers to want to promote their knowledge, their expertise, to show off a bit, uh, and all of that just gets in the way of a clear direction or a clear delivery of a message. So again, egoless writing, I think, is important as part of it. So I was talking about formats. And this is again uh, from the survey um, we did back in January. And what we did was we asked people to rank um, eight different formats by the extent to which they enjoyed using them. Um, and some of the results actually I think are quite surprising. Articles, uh, so this is the measure of popularity of the different formats. Articles have been having a bit of a bad press over the last five or ten years. But people actually like articles a lot. And you sit and you think, if I'm a busy person, why do I like articles? And it's because I can get straight to them. Um, I can skim them quickly. I can get to that nugget of information that I want. And that's it. I don't have to finish it. I've got the information. I can go. They are very quick. They're very quick, very efficient. Videos. Again, people like videos. It's a great way of learning a skill in one minute to three minutes. They're a bit linear. Maybe the linearity is why they're not as popular as videos. Webinars tend to be quite long, but people like the, 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 the personal dimension of it all. And again, that contributes. Workbooks are nice for, for teaching a skill and then getting someone to apply it directly and learn from that direct application. I'm surprised that infographics are as low down the list, if you like, um, as they seem to be. They're great for presenting information quickly and cleanly. Uh, maybe people find them unsatisfying or they don't have enough data or whatever and they prefer other formats instead. Podcasts, further down the list of preference, and I think that's because they're niche. They're great if you're commuting, they're great if you're on a treadmill, but they're lousy in pretty much any other situation. But in their niche, they're brilliant which leaves us with quizzes and games, which are not where you would expect them to be. And I think if you're looking at this from the perspective of a busy person, quizzes, they're making you work for information. Maybe you have to answer a sequence of eight questions or 15 questions. And that's fabulous. They can help you navigate really well, get to the solutions you want, but you're working for it, it's taking time. And games, Again, if you've got 10 minutes to go before a meeting for which you need a piece of information and someone says, I'd like you to play this game to get that information, I think you'd scream. So they had definitely have their places, but not, I think, in the context of busyness. So what does this leave us? It leaves us with different types and different formats of training depending on the situation. If we have compliance as a need, the need to be, for it to be seen that people have taken information on board, have been through a structured learning process, then the conventional approach is great. E delivered by an expert to people who are learning. This is what you need to know, step-by-step -step instruction. Uh, defined learning path. Sometimes sessions are short, often they're long. You have to go and get them. One-off presentation, emphasis on completion. Learner as a student, good for compliance. They are very good at those circumstances where learning needs to be proven to have, been, to have happened. But when you're looking at busy people, that's a totally different information need. What do you want to know right now? Not what this is what you want to need to know. Step-by-step -step instructional process takes too long. Uh, we need to go straight to the point. The learner knows what the learner needs to know. The learner needs to be able to follow his or her own path at his or her own pace. It needs to fit into tall, small time slots. It needs to remind people we need to do that marketing job so that when people detect that they need learning, um, they know immediately where to go and it's right in front of them. And that's where you get the steady drip drip of ideas of repetition that helps things settle in. Overall, what we're looking at is not learner as a student, it's the learner as a valued customer, and it's a different approach to give that on-demand learning that 
people need if they're in that very busy, not time for conventional learning place. So we have all of that focused in on the needs of the learner. Um, what about corporate needs, the people who are paying for this? Again, a lot of the benefit comes from this figure. 97% of self-directed learning improves my business performance. This is where a lot of the improvement in business performance comes from. And then it's just the corporate side of a lot of the features we've talked about before. Making stuff really easy to find intuitively, quickly, 24 by 7, across whatever platform people are consuming information on. Tempting people, good content, fresh content, interesting content, stuff that people want to learn and get a buzz from consuming. Um, again, just in time, bite-sized. Fitting in with the LMS, with the learning platform as well, so that we can see what's happening. But this is the organization providing a platform for learning, uh, overcoming barriers and helping people take control of everything they're doing. So key takeaways. First of all, the motivation to learn. People are very motivated to learn. They know that this makes a huge difference to their careers. Traditional approaches work very well for compliance-oriented stuff, for stuff that people are mandated to learn, people have to learn. It's a different approach that we need to take for people who are inspired to learn, uh, are too busy to learn in the workplace, but are passionate about building their skills and getting ahead. People want to be in control. We all want to be in control. None of us want to be told to do something, so we need to work out how to give control to the learner so, again, they can get the inspiration they need. Learn where they, wherever they are, online, offline. We need to market them. We need to get our learning to the front of our, their minds, and we need to keep it at the front of their minds. And again, it's the stuff about easy to find, easy to access, enjoyable, and small chunks of time. So thank you for listening. Thank you for giving me your time. Um, we're MindTools.com. We care very much about this type of learning. It's what we do all of the time. Um, we're at stand P12, which is just down that away. If you've got any questions, it would be brilliant to talk to you. Um, if you'd like free trial access to the resources we do, we can give you a card, and that's fantastic. So please do come and talk to us. Um, and it would be a pleasure to speak. Thank you. Thank you.